Hello, welcome back to the Mark Jernod Show, the tech show about hacking. In this video, I'm going to go over what is a router, why your router sucks, and the router that best practices it says to use, okay? To protect ourselves, to protect me, to protect you. So without further ado, let's get right into it. You better believe we are going dark. What is a router? A router is a device that connects two or more packet switched networks or sub networks. It serves two primary functions, which is managing traffic between these networks by forwarding data packets to their intended IP addresses and allowing multiple devices to use the same internet connection. There are several types of routers, but most routers pass data between LANs, which is local area networks, and WANs, wide area networks. A LAN is a wide group of connected devices restricted to a specific geographic area. A LAN usually requires a single router. A WAN, by contrast, is a large network spread out over a vast geographic area. Large, large organizations and companies that operate in multiple locations across the country, for instance, will need separate LANs for each location, which then connects to the other LANs to form a WAN because a WAN is distributed over a large area. It often necessitates multiple routers and switches. A network switch forwards data packets between groups of devices in the same network, whereas a router forwards data between different networks. So how does a router work? Think of a router as an air traffic controller and data packets as aircraft headed to different airports or networks. Just as each plane has a unique destination and follows a unique route, each packet needs to be guided to its destination as efficiently as possible. In the same way that an air traffic controller ensures that planes reach their destinations without getting lost or suffering a major disruption along the way, a router helps direct data packets to their destination IP addresses. Uh, in order to direct packets effectively, a router uses an internal routing table, which is a list of paths to various network destinations. The router reads a packet's header to determine where it is going, then consults the routing table to figure out the most efficient path to that destination. It then forwards the packet to the next network in the path. What is routing, right? You know, the, the protocols during this process, right? What is the difference between a router and a modem, right? So although some internet service providers, also known as ISPs, may combine a router and modem with a single device, they are not the same. Each plays a different but equally important role in connecting networks to each other and to the internet. A router forms networks and manages the flow of data within and between these net those networks, right? While a modem connects those networks to the internet, modems forge a connection to the internet by converting signals from an ISP into a digital signal that can be interpreted by any connected device. A single device may plug into a modem in order to connect to the internet. Alternately, alternatively, a router can help distribute the signal to multiple devices within an established network, allowing all of them to connect to the internet simultaneously. Think of it like this. If Bob has a router, but no modem, he will be able to create a LAN and send data between the devices on that network. However, he will not be able to connect that network to the internet. Alice, on the other hand, has a modem but no router. She will be able to connect a single device to the internet, for example, her work laptop, but cannot distribute that internet connection to multiple devices, say her laptop and her smartphone. Carol, meanwhile, has a router and a modem. Using both devices, she can form a LAN with her desktop computer, tablet, and smartphone and connect them all to the internet at the same time. So what are the different types of routers? In order to connect a LAN to the internet, a router first needs to communicate with a modem. There are two primary primary ways to do this. One, a wireless router. A wireless router uses an internet cable to connect to a modem. It distributes data by converting packets from binary code into radio signals, then wire wirelessly broadcast them into uh, using uh, an antenna, right? Wireless routers do not establish LANs. Instead, they create WLANs, wireless local area networks, which connect multiple devices using wireless communication. Next, we have the wired router, which is like a wireless router. A wired router uses, uh, it also uses an Ethernet cable to connect to a modem. It then uses separate cables to connect to one or more devices within the network, create a LAN, and link the devices within that network to the internet. 
In addition to wireless and wired routers for small LANs, there are many specialized types of routers that serve specific functions. We have the core router, which is unlike the routers used within a home or small business LAN. A core router is used by a large corporations and businesses that transmit a high volume of data packets within their network. Core routers operate at the core of an internet and do not communicate with external networks. Edge router, which is a, you know, while a core router exclusively manages data traffic within a large scale network, an edge router communicates with both core routers and external networks. Edge routers live at the edge of a network and use the BGP, which is the border gateway protocol, to send and receive data from other LANs and WANs. Virtual router, which is a software application that performs the same function as a standard hardware router, it may use the virtual router redundancy protocol, the VRRP, to establish primary and backup virtual routers should one fail. Now, what is an SSID? SSID stands for a service set identifier, and it is the technical term for the name of the network that WLAN routers broadcast. SSIDs enable users to find and connect to the wireless network broadcast by the router, which is a properly secured router, should require password entry as well. Consumer routers for Wi-Fi networks usually have their factory uh, default SSID printed on the side or the bottom. So what are some security challenges associated with your router, my router, our routers, our routers? So we have vulnerability exploits, which is all hardware based routers come with automatically installed software known as firmware that helps the router perform its functions. Like any other piece of software, router firmware often contains vulnerabilities that cyber attackers can exploit one example. And router vendors periodically issue updates to patch these vulnerabilities. For this reason, router firmware needs to be updated regularly. Unpatched routers can be compromised by attackers, enabling them to monitor traffic or use the router as part of the botnet. We have DDoS attacks. Small and large organizations often are the targets of distributed denial of service attacks directed at their network infrastructure. Unmitigated network layers DDoS attacks can overwhelm routers or cause them to crash, resulting in network downtime. Cloudflare Magic Transit is one solution for protecting routers and networks from these kinds of DDoS attacks. Uh, we have administrative credentials, which is all routers come with a set of admin credentials for performing administrative functions. These credentials are set to default values such as admin as the user as the username and admin as the password. The username and password should be reset to something more secure as soon as possible. Attackers are aware of this common default values for these credentials and can use them to gain control of the router, your router, remotely if they are not reset. So PFSense, okay? PFSense is the router that most uh, people are saying are best practice, right? Which is a powerful routing operating system, which is a free and open source operating system for routers and firewalls. PFSense can be installed on most commodity hardware, including all computers and embedded systems. PFSense is typically configured and operated through a user-friendly web interface, making administration easy even for users with limited networking knowledge. Generally, one never needs to use terminal or edit config files to configure the router. Even software updates can be run from the web UI, PFSense software modules, right? PFSense is mostly used as a router and firewall software and typically configured as DHCP server, DNS server, Wi-Fi access point, VPN server, all running on the same hardware device. PFSense also allows for installation of third-party open source packages such as Snort or Squid, or Squid, sorry. <laughs> through a built-in package manager, making it a default choice for many network administrators. PFSense is a flexible by design. It can be used as a small home router as well as run the entire network of a large corporation. Nowadays, PFSense is often replacing Cisco and other expensive name brands in large corporate environments. Not because it's free, but because it is feature-rich and mature platform. So why use PFSense and not one of the off-the-shelf router? Your average off-the-shelf router is unreliable, has limited functionality due to the manufacturer lockdown, and potentially has multiple software vulnerabilities. 
manufacturers of the commodity routers do not have incentives in patching software bugs, performance problems, or even serious security holes. Once the router is sold, there, there's no reason for the manufacturer to keep spending money on development and security. Open source operating systems such as PFSense are regularly updated and are known to patch security issues promptly. PFSense puts you in control of your networking. So what hardware to choose for PFSense? PFSense can be installed on any hardware. Your old computer may become your new router, right? This is a great way to get started if you have a computer with at least two network cards. Once you are convinced you like the platform, you may choose one of the dedicated hardware platforms such as uh, PC Engine's APU, TechLagger, TLSense, uh, Socris, NetGate, or others. So what do you think? I want to know your opinion. Please put your opinion in the comment section. I will respond to you. Please hit the notification bell. Please hit the subscribe button. I love you. Stay safe. See you on the next video.